<laughs> well, here we are. It's another day, another midday, midweek. Nice to see you, Frank. Not, not yes, it's good to be here. Not not skiving off to the RAP this morning. I see that's good, <laughs> <laughs> but good to see you. Good to see you. No, uh, it's it's good. I, I must admit, I've got a bit of a a spring in my step at the moment. I think. Excellent. Clean bill of health always good to have. It is. It is. Yep. Good. Good. So um, today's a. I don't think we'll be very long. Bit of a mixed bag. Um, NZ Defence has been in the uh, in the news recently. So the last two um, midday midweeks this month, we've had uh, articles in the uh, in the media about Ohakia was one, and um, not being able to afford the the upgrades, and then the upgrades of the housing in Wairuru last week, and this week, um, <laughs> NZ Defence are saving money. They're um, axing the big component of the civilian part of NZDF. Um, because they can't afford them and they've got to save the money. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was in, if it wasn't for those people who were, weren't in uniform, wandering around doing a whole host of jobs, the old um, army machine would come to a grinding halt. And um, now they're going to, to uh, try and get rid of them. Uh, but the, the real capper is, and this one's the one that gets me, earlier on, as in last year, there were promises of um, pay rises. And this article in the Herald, and I, I think I've put it up on the, um, on the Facebook page, says that the pay rise that was going to come um, isn't coming. So I think it was something like, uh, let me just check the article while I'm talking to you. Somewhere around 100 and... 40 something, $163 million of additional funding to improve the pay and allowances for uniformed military personnel. Well, they just put a knife through that. That ain't going to happen. So, you know, like um, as Frank and I have just been discussing before we came online here, um, how many people who were in that queue for a pay rise that was keeping them in New Zealand will now be putting their hand up and going, um, Hello, Australia. I love you, my cousins across the ditch. <laughs> and we'll be jumping ship. And in your case, Frank, that's what's happening. Is that right? That's you know what info you get? Exactly. I've just, just been reading a, an article from the Australian Naval News, and it was written by a, a gentleman called Gordon Arthur um, on the um, uniqueness of the Royal New Zealand Navy. And it starts off that New Zealand, um, the Navy, has got the biggest economic zone in the world to uh, patrol. It is 4.3 million square kilometres. And I know it goes right up the Pacific, halfway to Chile and halfway the other way. And we've got nine ships to do it, of which only five are operational. Now, that is... <laughs> It's it's hard to fathom. Um, I can remember in my days we would always have a ship out uh, in refit or uh, doing uh, maintenance, uh, maybe even have two out. But having only five operational ships is shocking. What they are looking at here, and this gentleman points out that New Zealand's biggest problem is replacements. Now all the ships they have are all coming to the end of their life. Now, yes. they sort of class a frigate around 30 years and a logistics ship a little bit longer. But they're going to have this massive bill to replace these ships uh, in approximately 8 to 10 years uh, at, the, at, the, at the most distant time, um, and they don't really know where they're going. In fact, they said here they've been looking at unmanned ships now they're doing trials with a 6.8 meter long unmanned surface vessel to um, make decisions of whether we could uh, use these to um, operate around the coast well I, I don't know that that to me is is just ludicrous 
right? <laughs> um, you know, a ship who's got to go from here could be up in the tropics one week. The next week, you're down in the Auckland Islands. Well, I'm sorry, but a man, 6.8 metre man, unmanned vessel is not going to do that. Wow, right. So they've got all these worries, but no one seems to be making a decision. One decision I noticed he pointed out was that, well, we did a trial with the Royal Navy and we put some people on board HMS Tamar. And that's a good example of how we might be able to de deploy our personnel by loaning them to other people. Oh, okay. So our coastline's not looked after, but theirs is. Well, that's okay. <laughs> At so least there we go. The well, well, I'll, I'll be watching um, how they go with the next, uh, within the next 10 years, at least, I hope 10 years. And you're Please. saying um, earlier on that um, the Navy's losing that chunk of experience middle. in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And what's happening to them, Frank? Where they... Well, it seems to be a lot of them are just just taking taking retirement, um, but several of them, many of them, are going to Australia because the Australian Navy will now accept them as direct entry, virtually, uh, into the Australian Navy. Um, which, to me, if I was given that opportunity, I think I would take it. <laughs> plenty more ships, bigger ships, yeah, plenty that's right. bases, yeah, yeah. Plenty so of um, experiences. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, as um as everything is, it's a matter of let's watch the space. Um, we know from the articles that we get here that um the media produce, the state of NZ Defence is um our former employer. Um, it's not really good at the moment. So um, let's see what the uh, the government can pull out of the hat of anything, to um to keep keep the troops in New Zealand, to keep the ships afloat, to keep the planes flying, yeah. um, and also to have a state of um, of readiness to respond to, it could be a, a, a civil defence emergency somewhere in the Pacific, uh, could be even within New Zealand. So um, it's going to be an interesting time in the future, I think. It's interesting now, let alone next week. <clears throat> so, yep, let's keep an eye on this. It's... Um, it's, it's, I think it's a bit of a challenge for everybody. Um, and certainly I don't hold any um, any malice towards those who've decided that going overseas to Australia to uh, ply your trade is a, is a good thing to do. If you're, you're looking after a family and you've just had a, a salary uh, promise of increase and then suddenly it's been taken away. It doesn't make you happy every day when you're trying to put food on the table. So... Yeah, and I, I also think that the um, environment that they work in these days in the military, um, it's totally different to what I worked in and probably yourself. Um, you know, if you were told to uh, jump, you you just said how high. These days, uh, uh, they even call their officers by their Christian name. Which is, you know... Can you imagine being in a trench and the, the major says, uh, right oh boys, let's go over the top. Yes, Johnny, we're away. <laughs> yep, heap of changes and um, who knows, not all good, not all bad. We just, um, it's a totally different world to when we were in service. So for those of you who, um, who dwell in the uh, Tauranga, that part of the Eastern Bay of Plenty, I think it's the eastern side. Yes, Eastern Bay of Plenty. Um, <clears throat> there is a um, uh, a meet and greet kind of thing for the um, at the Tauranga RSA. So it's veteran and family support drop-in centre Tuesdays and Wednesdays, ten o'clock till three o'clock. The Hinton Lounge at the Tauranga RSA, one two three seven Cameron Road. In a similar vein, this Friday, 26th of July, if you're in the Christchurch, Canterbury region, Wigram Air Force Museum, uh, 10 a.m. is the uh, proposed kind of kickoff time or the normal kickoff time. Um, it, but I do note the times I've been there at 10. I've been a bit late. Uh, people are dropping in a bit earlier, so any time from half past nine onwards um, to get a seat and a, a hot brew and a chat with, um, with your colleagues. 
this Saturday, uh, 27th of July, 11 a.m., Birkenhead RSA is the AGM for the Southeast Asian Veterans Association. So we look forward to seeing you there. If you uh, want to have a vote, I'm sure Morris will welcome you um, paying your subscription. Um, and you can join us online. I think Morris is going to send out some information about that prior to um, Saturday. So there you go. That's about all from me. Um, crossing the bar, Frank. Yeah, well, I've got um, three um, three today, and um, one of these uh, sailors was in my own branch. Um, X-ray 20054, McCann Gus, Royal New Zealand Navy, communications operator. Gus peacefully crossed the bar at home on the 21st of July, 2024. Gus's funeral will be held Wednesday the 31st at 2 p.m. Cloudy Bay Funeral Services. 15 Boyce Street, Springlands, Blenheim. C16263, Bainbridge, Barry Lyle, known to us all as Basil, Chief Petty Officer, Mechanical Engineer, Apprentice, Royal New Zealand Navy, joined 1958 of Class of 18, crossed the bar on Monday morning, the 22nd of July, 2024. Barry has been privately cremated. However, there will be a celebration of his life at a later date. F20797, Dawson Wayne, Lieutenant Commander, Royal New Zealand Navy, served 73 to 96. Wayne crossed the bar on the 19th of July, 2024. More details will follow. Please accept our condolences to all of the family, friends, and comrades. Harris, Greg, a regular force cadet from the uh, New Zealand Army and the Re Royal New Zealand Corps of Transport. He was a, a cook in the Cating Platoon 1RNZIR 1986 to 1989. Uh, Greg passed away in Port Douglas, Australia after a, a lengthy illness. 303555, Warrant Officer Retired, Thompson, Toto W, New Zealand Regiment, RNZIR, Royal New Zealand Corps of Transport, passed away in Kaitaia on Tuesday, the 9th of July, aged 87. Uh, Toto served in both 1NZ Regiment Alpha Company and 2NZ Regiment Charlie Company in Malaya. Um, served initially with the anti-tank platoon and then with the reorganisation in April 64, he became a mortar platoon sergeant, later on changing from the infantry regiment to the Army Service Corps and the New Zealand Corps of Transport. 345667, Faulkner, William F., New Zealand Regiment, passed away in Auckland, 6th of July, 2024, aged 86. William served in Malaya in 2NZ Regiment, 1959 to 1961. And here's just a couple from the RNZAF. W79646. Krog, C-R-O-G-H. UNO, known as Krog, uh, LAC. He was in the RNZAF from 9th of January 59 until 1st of January 1963. Passed away 21st of July, 2024. Hotel 83060, Ross D. Gosling, RNZAF. Passed away on the 11th of July, 2024, aged 73. Ross served in the RNZAF from February 67 to August 78. Um, and he was with uh, 41 Squadron with sorties to Vietnam. He was uh, an air engineer. And as usual, we offer our condolences to the families of those who passed and offer our hand and assistance should you need it. Uh, make contact with us or with the uh, local RSA support network and um, they can help you negotiate these times, especially if you have um, eligibility to um, access support from Veterans Affairs. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. 
at the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them, lest we forget. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for joining us this morning, people, or today. Um, we look forward to catching up with you next week. The next one will be, um, I think that's about the 1st of August or something. I'll just check my calendar. Seven days' time. No, it's the last day of July. Oof. Time's passing, folks. Christmas is coming. So is summer, and that's a good thing. <laughs> but I'm not so sure. We need a bit of rain. Make the grass grow. Um, so that's us for today, and we'll catch up with you um, next week. Look after yourselves in the uh, in the interim, and just in case, you know, it may not be me next week. Who knows? The AGM, I may be ousted as the president. Someone else will be taking my place. That'll be wonderful. <laughs> Frank, and thank you for joining joining us. Thank you for, um, I mean, over the last 12 months, we started off with yourself and Gilmore, and now it's down to the two of us, so never mind. We've done a good job, I hope, and um, we'll see people on Saturday if you're going to Auckland for the yep. AGM. Uh, if not, we'll, someone will see you here, same time, same bet channel, next week. <laughs> Bye. See you later.